This podcast is not a substitute for a relationship with a mental health professional. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Mental Health is a Lifestyle Podcast with your girl, Andrea Wise Brown, and my brother, Stephen James Dixon. Stephen James Dixon, the relationship coach, relationship expert. And so here we are mm-hmm. starting our series on love. Love. Okay, but I'm hungry uh-huh. for love. I'm a man oh. and I'm hungry for love. <laughs> Some men that turned off already. Like, what are you talking about? Love and men loving? That's right. Like, that's right. I'm a man and I'm hungry for love. Right. And all of this was rooted in Stephen's book. He's an author, published author of Men Don't Heal, We Hope. And so this is our series. If you haven't turned on before uh, the podcast or heard anything before that, we are doing a six part series on creating a safe space for men to heal. Yeah. This is your safe space. So we, we gotta, we gonna help you. We ready. Yeah, we ready. Okay. And so today we are talking about love. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm hungry for love. Yes. As a, from a man's perspective, kind of teaching, educating, um, coaching men through the process of how to feel love, Mm. how to express it, how to accept it, you know, love. So listen, so let, let's start. I feel like we should start where uh, maybe we can meet people at, right? Mm -hmm. Cause you always, you'll say to me about using big words. So let me, no, no, no. So we, I want to start where the people at, cause I don't (laughs) ever want to lose the people. Right. (laughs) So I want to start from your story of the first time, that you've ever that you recognize mm-hmm. that you felt love that you recognize that you was in love with a woman. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um. While we're dating, I'll lead up to that part. Mm-hmm. Where when men and women are dating, 15, 16, 17, 20 years old, whatever we're dating, um, a woman are more in touch with their feelings and emotions earlier. So women would tell me, let's say I'm 18 years old and I got a girlfriend Mm -hmm. and my girlfriend says to me that she loves me. Um, When I'm dating, I felt pressure to say I love you in return. Mm. I didn't really get to evaluate how I felt if I really did love them because I really didn't know what love was. I just knew that she told me she loved me a couple times. And if I don't say it soon, I'm going to lose her. Mm. And so there was never an evaluation early on of how do I feel or what is this feeling? It was more that I have to say the verbal response that she is requiring me to say. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was times when women will say, you don't love me. And then I don't want them to feel bad. Mm -hmm. And I want us to continue having sex. Mm -hmm. So I have to say I love her. And it wasn't until my wife, Mm -hmm. when we were dating, where she left, she walked off when we were having a conversation about these types of things and where the relationship was going, Mm -hmm. that she left and was like, I'm done here because I can't continue to invest love in you Mm. and not knowing where that investment will reap any benefits in the future. And so that is when I, when she got up and left, I I thought about it like, like this is premeditated. (laughs) That woman came here to break up with me today. This is what you thought. This, this is what, what you I'm assumed. Through, this like, is so good because for you, it was just about you. It was just about me. And that's something that we really have to talk about with men. Where I can understand where it may come from, but we got to, we have to create a change. Yes. Because yeah, you thought going into that, whatever it was, regular, ha- day. regular day. And when she got up to leave, it was poor me. Yes. Right? She, because this was premeditated. Yes. Not even taken into, not even trying to conceive or, you know, just thinking that, who, what led her up to here? What was she thinking? What was she going through? Yeah, she didn't, she didn't argue, yell, scream, cry. None of that. She's like, where's this going? I'm like, we chilling. We good. We having relations and we hanging out and lunch and all that. It's sunny outside. Is sunny a feeling? It's a good day. Sunny is not a feeling. Sunny is not a feeling. The, the sunny weather, is not. No, the weather got nothing to do with a feeling. Okay, <laughs> so so we outside, you know all that, and and she just said, okay, well I'm done here, and got up and walked out. 
Mm. And I was like, sit there for 30 seconds. And I'm like, she just really left. And then at the, the next 30, like, she's leaving. And my, my heart started tugging. And I was like, oh, yeah. I asked her if she wanted me to pick her up. She said no. She wanted to drive her own car so she can make this theatrical, dr dramatic oh. departure oh, yeah. of where well, I don't need you to drive me home. Oh. I'm out. She oh. bounced. Yeah. So you was you went straight into defense mode, right? Yeah. This is another thing that young boys learn. Yep. Yeah. So I'm not. I ain't got nothing to do with what I'm feeling, but it's somebody else's fault. Yep. I'm in a victim seat. You doing this to me. This was premeditated. Oh, she did opposed to sitting with what I'm feeling. She and was you was forced. Forced. Come on now. To to forced to forced to be real with myself. Mm. And but because you didn't want to lose her. Because I didn't want to lose her. And I and, and all of that happened fast. Wait, I don't want to lose her. I gotta see how I feel. What am I feeling? What's going on with me? I she almost out of sight. What you want to do? Okay, go track, go track that woman down. Go get that one. Hold on, woman. I'm trying to figure out how I feel. Oh. This whole new feeling thing. Okay. But at first, I'm like, she's tripping. Is tripping a feeling? Tripping is not a feeling. feeling tripping is, tripping not, a feeling. is not a feeling. See, we need you to just walk around with us <laughs> as we ask you questions to confirm what is a feeling or not. Because I'm like, she's tripping and tripping. She's tripping. That's a feel. No, she's not a You sure? Tripping is not a feeling. Okay, it's not a feeling. Mm -mm, okay, so feeling. I thought she was tripping at first. Okay. And so then once I said she's still walking, maybe she's not tripping. Because it, it wasn't physical. She would, she would she definitely wasn't falling down from tripping. Just tripping, not a feeling. Dang it. And so um, I, I ran after that woman uh -huh. and, I, and I stopped her and I, and, I, and I felt it in my heart for the first time ever. Mm. And it wasn't coming from here anymore. Oh, that's Because I love you up until that point. It always came from here. Oh, that's so good. It was always a calculation. Right. It was like moving a check, like a piece on a chessboard or, yes. or a checkerboard. It's my turn. My turn oh, it's my turn to talk. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Check. What's next? What else we gonna do? Yeah, I did, I did it. I did it. It's I did good. a high five to somebody. Like I told her, I loved her, and she's happy now. Right. I'm a good man. I'm a good guy. Yes. I'm a good guy. I'm good. Yeah, she's lucky to have hurt. me. I didn't hurt her. Yeah. Right. I told her I love. I told her uh -huh. I loved her. Yeah. I didn't evaluate if I actually did. Mm. I don't know if I did. Oh. I, I didn't. I, I wasn't in sync. I wasn't in touch. We hadn't had those words back then, like unpack and unpeel. Mm. I didn't know how to do all that. Mm -hmm. And so I told her that I loved her. But in that first time, and I've been telling her I loved her for like two years, uh -huh. 10 years, whatever. Same uh -huh. thing. Uh -huh. and, um, and, <laughs> so but two, first and, time, two and 10 is the same. I mean, because you're just talking. You got that? You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, it wasn't like you. it was deeper. It was I like, got you. I got if you. It's, if it's two days, two months, two years, 10, if you're just talking, I got you. it don't matter how long you say I got it. you. On your side. <laughs> right. Right. To her, it man. Just, up to her, yeah. She didn't count she it all 1,200. She got all of your times. anniversary. She yes. got the first month. She yes. got the, the Honda she first kids. Mama. She got, oh, all those anniversaries. Yes. So she got time down. Yes. And you, it's all morphed together. Yes, it's all a blur. It's a blur. This is the times I told her I loved it because I had to. I mean, mm. I mean, up until that point, telling the woman I loved them was yes. more of a calculation where, you know, almost like if somebody said, what is two plus two? Mm -hmm. I would say four. Mm -hmm. I know the answer, you know? And so when a woman would say, I love you, I know what to say. Oh, that's good. I love you too. That's good. And that's how, as men, we grow and we never, it wasn't until I actually hurt. That's what I'm really trying to work through, like. Like I was always just saying the words, yeah. But then when when she was going to depart, mm -hmm. and then I I was hurt, yeah. That's when I was, and then I can still fix it. Mm. All those emotions at the same time hit me mm. to where I was like, oh, this is what love is. Oh, that's so good. I want her. I need her. Oh, that's good. I have to have her. Mm. I can't let her leave Come me. Come on now. I need her love. Ooh. She's gonna take that love and give it to someone else Ooh. now. I don't want her to give it Woo! to nobody else. We don't want that. We know that for sure. That's right. That we don't want her to give it to nobody yeah, else. That's right. And yeah. so then it became, okay, what do I do here now? Mm. How do I do this? Oh, that's good. How do I get better at this every day? Mm. What do you need? Mm. Because before when I say, what do you need? Mm -hmm. In the same way that I would say, how you feel? I would say, I was hungry. When I say, what do you need? Mm -hmm. I was like, are you hungry? 
Mm-hmm. How about that? That's you know, right. What you need, girl? That's right. Yeah. How you but, well, because it's our perception, right? And we see the world through our perception. Yes. Yeah, I call perception glasses. Yes. Yeah, so we all have these glasses on and we just assume that everybody else sees the world through the glasses that we have on the same yes. vision. But we don't. Yes. And as you start to grow, then you start to change your glasses. Yes. So now you're not wearing the Walmart glasses. I mean, this is not a shout out. You know, shout out, saying, Walmart. Shout out to could Walmart. They sure day. could, but Back I'm just up. saying it could be. But it, let's just say you just may not be going to the corner store right. to get your glasses anymore. You may have stepped up to Walmart and right. then to Target yes. and then maybe Target. down to, you got me North Park or right. wherever, Gucci or whatever Gucci it is. Glasses. right? <laughs> but whatever that looks like, right? So it's about mm-hmm. changing your your lens of the world view of, of other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so go ahead. Perception. Changing, changing your lenses. Yes. I like that changing lenses because you mm-hmm. can change lenses and glasses and all that kind of stuff. Come on. But if you don't change your prescription, oh, it don't matter. You're still going to not be able to see. I love it. You're talking about the frames. Right. Okay. Right. Come on with them the frames. Frame. Yeah. The frames. So the, the, the prescription oh, oh. in the lens that help me see further or help me read up close. Which is deep. Yes. And so in my heart, Come on now. I was able to dig into my heart and uh-huh. say, wait a minute, I have a need. Mm-hmm. And that's part of, too, in my evolution of love mm-hmm. is I never allowed myself to need. Mm-hmm. And for the first time, so I, I, I need her. OK, so let me tell you that what research shows and research and a lot of my clients, uh, male clients, you know, um, have reported or have told me that, you know, growing up in society, a societal norm teaches men or a societal norm is that men should not need. They should need, they should be self-sufficient and they definitely shouldn't need anything from a woman. No, absolutely not. Don't need nothing from no woman. That is maladaptive, y'all. That is dysfunctional, but it Mm -hmm. is a societal norm that's perpetuated, Mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, where society says, because you make me explain stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Where it just is is passed on, it's passed on, it's passed on, and more people expect that same thing. So as you're growing up in society, you are adapting to what it is that they say that you should be. And so what young boys are taught when they're young little boys growing up is that you should not have needs. Anything that you need, you should be able to take it and, and deal with it and figure it out on your own. Yes. And and I'm going to say it again, specifically, you shouldn't need anything from a woman. No, that's that's a cardinal rule. Like Lord we, don't, have we don't have to speak that. That's just when that's just in our spirit. But like you this. heard it somewhere, y'all, because I'm telling you, <laughs> when you came out your mama's hoo-ha. Hoo-ha. Yeah. You didn't. You wasn't a little baby talking about you didn't have needs because you did. Because you cried when you needed food. I'm hungry. You mm-hmm. cried when you were wet. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm Take saying? You cried off. when you when you needed to be coddled. Mm-hmm. So you did have needs. Do you know that men were born just as sensitive as women? It's amazing. It is the truth to think about. Like, it, Come on, take a minute. I, I, you saw me, I had to take a minute. I want that. you to take a minute. I, and I, I want our brothers correct, out here. But I, you I, wanted I think to... it is. It is I'm, I'm studied. I kind of know it's what I'm talking about. correct that they're born the same, the same. Yeah. Huh. That's kind of deep. Yes. Just because That's the kinda... genitalia is different doesn't mean that the spirit is different, that right. the heart is different. Because my belief is, is that we are spiritual beings having a human Absolutely. experience. So we're all the same. Men are not born any less sensitive than women. That's critical. But yet society, and society meaning your teachers, your coaches, uh, the librarian, your preachers, your mama, your father, your aunties, your uncles, have all taught you that you shouldn't have needs. And so that takes us all the way to, and my and the point of, again, saying need was my love was rooted in need. Mm-hmm. And until I can have, until I can let, let myself be free enough to say I need this woman, I wasn't really free enough to say I love this woman and really mean it and really say that I have to have her. And that's what love is. Mm-hmm. Like as a man, like when you have to have that woman and it's not lust, it's okay. not financial, okay. it's not that she just make the good gumbo. Okay. The gumbo important though. 
Gumbo is important. Louisiana. Oh, so Gumbo, Gumbo is important. important. It, was okay. on, it was on my list. Oh, right. Okay. And so, okay. check that out. Oh, but, uh, nice. but yeah, yeah, needs. I needed the woman. I needed her friendship. Mm. I needed her uh, compatibility. Mm. I needed her partnership. Mm. I needed her presence. Mm. I needed her touch. Mm. Um, I just, I, I needed her. Ooh. And those needs said to my heart, come on. Hey, you love her. Mm. This is what love is. That equals love. That equals love. My need was my love was rooted in need and saying this. I I want I have to be with her. Oh, that's I so cannot cool. be without her. Ooh. I want her for the rest of my life. Oh, I love. I can't that. envision a day without her oh, that's for the so rest good. of my life. Mm. And then it allowed it allowed me finally to arrive at. Uh -huh. It's okay to love this woman. Mm. It's okay to tell everybody that I love her. That's so good. It's okay to say it in front of a pastor. Oh, that's That's good. how you get the marriage, right? Yes. It's okay now. Now I'm okay to express it in front of my friends, mm -hmm. family, her father, mother, my brother, my sister, mm -hmm. my fraternity brothers. Mm -hmm. I can say it in front of everybody now because I'm comfortable in it. I'm comfortable in that I need her mm -hmm. and I'm comfortable in that I love her mm -hmm. and I want everyone around me to know I love her mm -hmm. and I want everyone around her to know that I love her. Oh, that's good. So that's an expression of love. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. So listen, we're going to go a little bit deeper. Uh oh, deep. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, life goes on. Like you said, two years, 10 years, same thing. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, right? So now I'm feeling love. I've recognized that that's what that is. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. This is one I don't want to let go. Right. Right. She ain't my first, but this, I wanted to be my last. But then as I'm going through this with her and I proclaimed it and I, I've said it, I'm confident enough to put it out there to tell everybody, right? Mm -hmm. But then what happens with that love when something else in life pops up? So whether it's conflict within the relationship or uh, um, something else that may come up that you may not be pleased with. And since you haven't identified other feelings Right. You haven't you haven't learned to identify what other feelings are and you've mastered and you not just you, but men have mm -hmm. mastered anger is masking every feeling right yeah. of dissatisfaction, unhappiness of being hurt. It's all anger. All right. It. So if that's the one that I go to. Then what happens to love? Because I've learned, OK, I know what love is. So I can add that to my my anger mm -hmm. so what happens to love when when there's conflict when i'm displeased mm -hmm. when i'm unsatisfied with whatever society or with my job or with her because things happen you're two different people coming mm -hmm. together to try to live this life together mm -hmm. what happens to love then and if not speaking for you, from your perspective you are a relationship expert from other men, what men have told you? you gotta sit up for this. One. Sit up, please. Sit up. Sit deep, down. I want you to. So, so what happens with love and love being fleeting? Because Ooh. you gotta know what love is, right? So mm -hmm. after you get married, after you learning that you can't live without this person, hope hopefully this happens earlier for more men, but it didn't for me. Okay. Um, we're we're talking about let's break down love, okay. right? And how we do better at love. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at love in really three different ways. Okay. Uh, the first way, and, and this helps me love my wife better. Mm -hmm. The first way is I got to love me. Oh, that's so freaking good. I got to love me. Let me, mm. let me review. Let Please. me say them all and then we'll break it down. So I got to love me. Okay. And then I got to love the people around me. Mm -hmm. And then I can love my wife. Right. So we're talking about learning about love. Okay. It's, it, love can't just be a feeling. That's one of the key things for men mm -hmm. is that it can't. So now that we look how far we've come. Come on. We learning that love is a feeling. Yes. Not hunger. That's, that's not right. Not sleepy. That's right. Tired. Not angry. Not angry. That's right. Love. Okay. Love. Okay. okay. So, so, so we're learning that love uh -huh. is a feeling. Yes. So now how do we become good at loving? And the first step, like I said, is loving myself, mm -hmm. loving my friends, mm -hmm. loving my family. And then I can have better information and better prepared to love my woman so I can treat her with kindness mm. and passion mm. and being gentle mm -hmm. and all the things the Bible teaches us about love. Okay. So now loving thyself, you start there, right? Okay. And we have a lot of men that don't love themselves. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
they don't love themselves. Yes, yeah, yeah. You yeah. probably see this every day. I see it every day, and you know, I'm gonna tell you what it's rooted in. It's because they haven't really felt love during childhood, mm -hmm. right? Healthy love mm -hmm. by their mothers and their fathers. Mm -hmm. So listen, you you feel love, and let me let me. I'm gonna come in here and say yes. All every single person's mother loves you. Every single person out there, father, love you, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. However, there are certain needs that young boys have, and when they're unfulfilled, when they're unfulfilled by their primary caretaker, their nurturer, you know, their mother, the person who they came from, then there's, this kind, there's like a disconnect that comes and it starts to not really necessarily look like I'm mad at her I, or I, I'm, I'm upset with her, but it, it, it starts to show up as something's wrong with me. Is right. I'm not enough. I need to be better. I need to be dot, 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 dot. You know, I should perform like this. I should, be, because then I have these needs from her, these mm -hmm. needs that I want from her and my dad. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the statistics of, fatherless homes right. right and the primary caretaker most times even mm -hmm. when the father is in the home is the mom but you know while that's happening and I, I have these needs right this nurturing from mom and she may not know how to do that specifically with the boy right from what she's been taught from society then i start to feel when she criticizes me mm -hmm. or when she tells me she's probably trying to redirect me mm -hmm. right or set boundaries and maybe in an inappropriate way but i just keep taking it interpreting it as something's wrong with me right. i need to be better i should do more of this i should do more of that why am i not doing this you know and so and that's even when you step outside of rules which is normal for every child to do yep. right but still a little boy and we're not talking about girls during this series but as a little boy i am feeling like something is wrong with me and the fact that he my father is not showing up you know as i is my spirit tells me he should that gives me a sense of self-worth isn't talking to me about my feelings right. about my needs isn't exploring those things isn't teaching me how to be kind and loving and he's absent whether he's at work or just going ghost, right. right? But I, as a little boy, am interpreting that as there's something wrong with me. If yes. I was more of this, if I was more. Of this. So that's where the insecurity starts. That's where it starts. And then, uh, uh, and then as you become an adult, insecurity comes in other places where you start feeling like I don't make enough money. Ooh. Or you start thinking that's about. Right. Um, if you have, a, I, I, I talked to a man last week mm -hmm. who was out of touch with his son mm -hmm. and I had to talk to him about how that makes him feel mm -hmm. like he was like, well, the mom is doing this and doing that. And I can't see my, and, and I was like, but brother, it's not that simple. Mm -hmm. This affects you. Yes. You know, this yes. is not, you're making it be a mental thing Good. where the, ba the, the baby mama is doing all these things wrong or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, but still you need to be in touch with that's a part of you you created this human being with yes. this woman and for you to act like it's not a big deal that you don't have your son in your life no that affects you mm -hmm. and and if you do those types of things well so i'm talking about the building blocks of love yes so if you're a grown man yes and you don't have contact with your son that impacts your ability to love the next person mm -hmm. it may be small it may be big whatever but it's about your capacity. It's about how much you have to give. Mm -hmm. And if you got something that's always tugging at you, then you can't be free to give everything you have to someone else. Oh, that's so good. You got to be whole over here. Yes, come whole on. Whole and complete. Yes. Before you can hand that to someone else to give and, and have it be something that they desire and appreciate. Oh, that's so you good. You can't give them no raggedy love. Hey, family. Just stop by here for a couple of seconds have something for you. This right here is a go-to guide. The name of it is Six Pillars to Power Up Your Mind and to Make Mental Health a Lifestyle. This teaches you everything that you need to know to keep your mind healthy and strong. So come on now, if you want to keep your minds healthy and strong as you have joined this a part of our movement, you've joined this mission, you got to know how to do it. So this is your go-to guide.
going to get this at awisebrown.com. In addition to that, what you'll learn in this book is there are other ways to keep your mind healthy and strong, nice and alert, and that would be aromatherapy. Family, I'm trying to tell you something. This is delicious. Oh my goodness. This is a cruelty-free candle with no paraffins, no formaldehyde, and no known suspected carcinogenics. And the name of it is A Slice of Happiness. Because when you smell it, it raises the endorphins in your brain. I'm just telling you. And the dopamine, it makes you feel good. You get a burst of happiness. You can burn it or you can just walk by and smell it. You can find this too at awisebrown.com. People are loving it. Please get it before it sells out. A slice of happiness. And then family, because you, I know you're a part of me. I'm a part of you. We're doing this together. We got hoodies now, family. All of us, we got hoodies. Wise by Andrea, you know, it's kind of like on that candle. But y'all, let me show you what the back says. Mental health is a lifestyle. Andrea Wise Brown. And it's a zip up hoodie. So you can zip it down, zip it up. I can't really zip it down today because it's all I have on. And then I have it in white too. You can buy it in white too. Wise by Andrea. It's the cutest thing. Mental health is a lifestyle. Come on, family, we have hoodies. So I want you to go and get your hoodie that feels so comfortable. I just love to wear them everywhere. Get your aromatherapy and then get your go-to guide. You're going to go to awisebrown.com. Click on shop. awisebrown.com shop to get your goodies. Okay, see you on the other side. Raggedy love Yo, all the time. Raggedy, raggedy. But that's so good. No, I think it's so important that you speak of the word the word capacity, yes. right? So you just think about a battery, right? And if I'm using it up, if this much is used for this, and this like this is all you mm -hmm. have, it's your capacity. Mm -hmm. But you're using this for that, and then you're using this and all this unresolved stuff, then what do I have left to share with, as you would say? Yes. This person that you want to give love to or show. Yeah. Yes. I actually have a book called Love Capacity. I'm love gonna... Capacity. Yes. And it, and I have, a, I have a quiz too. We'll talk about that in another show. Please. I have a quiz where it, it tests your capacity to love. Like you just said, that battery. Yes. How much you have in it. And some men either don't never have a full capacity to give. Okay. Or think that what they give should be good enough. Mm. Instead of learning how to grow your capacity. And so not knowing that these bad relationships that you have, yeah. I'm not in touch with my son. Um, I'm disrespectful toward my mother. Yeah. I'm not a good friend. Yes. I'm not a good brother. Yes. I'm not a good neighbor. Yeah. You know, things like that, that impact your ability to love someone else. Yes. You got to be good in those areas. That's right. So men that are struggling with love today, first, evaluate how you are as a human being. Mm. Evaluate how you are. Like me, I can say to myself, I am happy with who I am as a son. Meaning that my mother calls me, she needs something. Okay, mom, we're going to get that figured out. We're going to get it taken care of. Maybe it's not always in exactly the time that she wants, mm -hmm. but I, I've gotten to a place where I'm happy with what I'm doing as a son. That's right. My brother called me, my sister called me. They know I'm here for them, mm -hmm. right? So I, I can be at peace in my spirit about how I am as a son, how I am as a brother. As a sibling, or that, yeah. that Yes, as a sibling. Gotcha. Then, that, then that, that evolves to your friendships. Mm. Am I a good fraternity brother? Am mm. I a good friend to my high school friends? Mm. I don't make it to all the high school events mm -hmm. or travel when they do a, 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 a fellas trip or, yeah. you know, get together for the different, you know, returns for every year, the anniversaries, things like that. Uh -huh. But am I happy with it? Mm. Do, they, do, they, do they know I'm there for them? Mm. Do I communicate with them? Do I tell them I love them? Do, what do I do with those friendships? Mm -hmm. And once you get all those things in alignment and you feel good about those relationships, yes. Now you can let her love yourself. So when I talked about earlier about my father not being in my life, yes. when people ask me about how I feel about that, my first thought is I love me. Mm. I'm happy with me. Mm. So I don't look at it like I missed something or I needed something or maybe I don't know what I missed or I don't know what yeah, I Yeah, because you know I'm going to come in here now. Right. Yeah. Because I believe in that balance of man and woman in a life. I got kids. Yes. But I right. love me. Okay. You love you. Yes. Yeah. And you know what, for the viewers who who don't know, um, 
so you did say you was raised by, because we may have talked about mm-hmm. this on the introduction show. Mm-hmm. So you were raised primarily by your mom. Yes. My, my father, mm-hmm. oh, you want to say that? No. Yeah, yeah. Say. When I was born, my father was in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, when he got out of prison, he ran away. Um, I hired a private investigator to find them and all that. What kind do of you stuff. mean he ran away? He disappeared. Like, like he's gone. And I know my father's entire family. Like he has 10 brothers and sisters. I stand in for my father in photos with his 10 brothers and sisters, my uncles and aunts. And so I'm tight with them. They love me because he's gone. He just got out of prison and he just disappeared. Changed his social security number, gone. I've hired private investigators. My aunts have hired private investigators to try and find him. We cannot find him. They only told us that he's still alive. If he's dead, it's easy to find somebody dead because they stopped the social security. Mm-hmm. So he's alive. He's still alive. Maybe he'll, hey, dad, hey, dad if you out there, holler at me, man. I'm, I'm 49 years old, wow. you know, playfully, but not playing. I know. Because listen, right? I can't even laugh. I'm right. like, right. look, I tried to, but I'm like, no, because guess what? I'm over here like, how was he feeling? Right. Because that, ha- you, of course you mask it with humor yes. because he's not here. Right. But that has to take a toll on you. For me, I just say that I, I, I'm i happy with me. I love me. My mother's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I had everything I needed because my uncles and aunts, his brothers and sisters, always wrap me. Mm-hmm. They always wrap me with love and affection and call me and check on me. And just anything I needed, I know I can go to them. Mm-hmm. So they And they were intentional about that because they wanted their brother, too. That's and good. they were looking for their brother, too. Mm. But I guess embarrassment, shame from being in prison, he just started a new life. Wow. And so I, I had to say to myself that God created this life for me. And he created this life for me without him in it. Mm. And I can only assume that I'm, I'm a Christian. I trust God's plan. Mm-hmm. So this is this plan for God has me to where I love me and I don't feel like I need or missed out on, on anything mm-hmm. because I'm happy with me today. Can I say this? Mm-hmm. Okay. I love that you're saying what my belief is, what I'm telling myself from what you just said is you feel you have accepted. Yes. I have accepted that he's not here. I have also accepted that I may not ever see him. Yes. You know, I have accepted the life that I have. I have it accepted it. However, I'm going to challenge you to just think about that your life would have been different mm-hmm. if he were here, if you could have found him, if he did show up. I know? think about that too. Like, But I also think about like, it could be different. It could be good. It could be bad. Mm-hmm. You don't know, right? Mm-hmm. You, you don't. Maybe because you know, my father was in prison. Maybe he would have added bad to my life. That's right. It's true. Possible. That's true. It's possible. No, that you're right. And so, and so I look at it both ways. That's so, good. so I tend to say, okay, this is what God had for me. Mm-hmm. My mother loves me like to the end. Like she would do anything and has done any and all things for me. And so when I look, wake up every morning, look in the mirror, I'm happy with who I am. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like I missed anything because I accept that part of my life mm-hmm. as that is what God had for me. God gotcha. didn't have my father in my life. Mm-hmm. And I tried to find my father. And so being that I, I couldn't find him, yeah. then this was God's plan for me gotcha. is to grow and evolve in this manner and be the man that I am mm-hmm. where I express love for my brothers, for my friends. And that takes us to the next level of love. Come on. One of the things I do that you're going to love mm-hmm. is I hug my friends and tell them I love them. Oh, that's so good. So we so we black men, for example, we, we was out of the country recently. It was like 11 of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the brothers I didn't know. We just celebrate one of our guys. And um, and uh, and as we were departing from our week-long vacation and things like that with guys hanging out, I hug my friends mm. and I tell them I love them. Mm. And, it, and, it was, and it started out like, it's weird because I don't hug no men. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Just, but now in these last two years, I just started like, man, let me, I don't know if I'm going to see this guy. I know that's right. So insecurity was whispering in your ear. That's that little anxiety, right? I don't do this. I don't whatever, the, you know, but then you push through it. Your growth, growth, your maturity, push that right on out. Yes. Push that, that instant gratification that, you know what I'm saying? That we talk about the negative coping skills or maladaptive cope, like it push. So you can do it is my point. I'm just yes. pointing that out that you can do. It's the work. I, just because I hear it, 
And it feels comfortable to do that, to reject this time, even though my spirit is telling me to do something else. I literally can turn that off and yes. do what it is that I'm called to do. And that is hug my brother and tell him I love him. Yes. And that's for everyone out there watching. Like, like you're a black man and you're white man, whatever color, right? right? I'm talking about my brothers, mm -hmm. my friends. Mm -hmm. We we can be gone at any moment. That's you right. were telling me a story earlier about, uh, you know, someone that had cancer that could be gone, mm -hmm. you know? And so, so I started thinking in terms of, man, we're getting older. I'm 49 years old. Mm -hmm. I hug my friends and tell them I love them. I love so it. that's the challenge to you men out there. Oh, I love it. Your friends. You departing your friend, man. You ain't seen your friend in two years. It, it might not see him again for two years or he passed away suddenly, car accident, whatever. Hug them. Yes. Tell them you love them. Oh, that's so and good. And me telling them I love them, mm -hmm. I feel like increased my capacity to love. Oh. Right? So me embracing love. Oh, it recharged you then. Yes. Okay, okay, the, 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 the battery. Yes. Richard, okay, okay. Yes. So even for the men that I did not know, mm -hmm. I had just met them this week. Mm -hmm. But we're now at the airport. We're departing. I don't just, hey, man, what's up? How I let you fist bump? I said, hey, man. And I had to say it to him because I didn't want them to be uncomfortable. Right. I said, hey, man, when I depart men now, I hug them and tell them I love you. Ooh, it's so good. And so I hug these men I just known for four or five days. Hey, brother, I love you. May God be with you. Mm. Stay blessed. Come on. Hey, be healthy, mm. you know, and, and, and talk about encouraging things now as a man. And I, and I believe, so So going back to now, what is love and how do we do it? Yeah. And if we start with loving thyself, mm -hmm. then loving thy brother, mm -hmm. you know, like real love. And we and the thing about men is we actually do have homeboys that we love. Yeah, of course. I get that. Yeah. But do you tell them that you love them? Oh, that's so good. Do you tell men, do you tell your boys oh, that's good. that you love them? Mm. And you and if you don't start doing it today, I love it. and it's gonna be weird and awkward and all these things, but just explain it to them like, hey man, I done known you thirty years, mm -hmm. man. I grew up with you. You've been in my life forever. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to just say you my homeboy anymore. Mm -hmm. That's my guy. Mm -hmm. Hug your man. It's okay. Even just the the simple act of a hug. Mm -hmm. We hug women all the time. Just mm -hmm. passing through, hugging. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, how are you doing? Hug. You know. Mm -hmm. like, Hug your man. Ooh, that's good. Tell him you love him. Yeah, that's good. That increases your capacity to love. Mm. It makes you more open to love. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. So listen, I'm going to just come in because not even, I, I think this is for all men. I think we should oh. do a challenge. We should do a challenge. Challenge. We're going to do a challenge. So we're going to do a love challenge, but mm -hmm. an expression. This is an expression of mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. right? Are you men, you are going to hug another man. Another man. Let's just do. Should we Men do just cut it off. We... Men just took their laptop, threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> hug another man. Ooh, yeah, hug another man until hug we see him again. Man. I'm gonna say one. Well, you know, I want to say like three. Find three men to hug. Yeah. You know, that's what I would want to say. So, uh, but I, I want to give a date. Like, so I'm gonna give a time span. So let's just do this. No, before because the, before the end of January. Before February 1st. Okay, before February 1st. Okay. But because come on. you hug your girls, talk about your girls and how you interact with your girls when you see them, when you ain't seen what, you know, in 10 years or y'all on vacation together. Listen, listen, listen. Now, not all women are open to hugs mm -hmm. because of their own trauma mm -hmm. and what they've experienced during childhood. But if you talk about Andrea Wise to the Brown. Andre hugs everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Andre hugs strangers. Mm -hmm. I do. And it's it's rooted in love because I just want people to feel seen and mm -hmm. heard and just important. So for me, that's just my thing. Like if, if I encounter you and you encounter me, I want you to leave me feeling like, like, like you something, like you mm -hmm. special, like you are who I see you as. Mm -hmm. So yes, am I, I am a hugger. Mm -hmm. So I might be not, I'm not, I may not be the average woman you would ask that to. Mm -hmm. However, of course, society does support women hugging and mm -hmm. bracing mm -hmm. and holding each other. And now we got the whole twerk. Uh, what is this? Pan, I'm going to call it a pandemic yeah. going on. I'm just saying like the dancing mm -hmm. where now women even dance with each other and touch each other while they're dancing. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is like another form of. You know, showing that, you know, there's a sisterhood here yes. or I support you. So, yes, women are, yes, more inept to do that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Than men. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I see women in the airport hug each other like like life is over tomorrow. <laughs> 
you know, almost in tears, just hugging and real mm. passion exchange of you are my bestie. Mm. You my BFF. You my ride or die. You my road dog. I need you forever. Anybody say anything wrong to you, I'm just diving on. Mm. And men have that same dedication to their friendships, that's right. but we don't verbally express it. Mm. That is the challenge. Oh, that's good. Hug your brother. Express love for them so that they know, hey, man, I done known you too long mm -hmm. not to love you. I love you. You know me. I know you. We've been through these things together. I love you. No, you I are part it. of my life. I love it. Okay, so that's the challenge that we're going to do mm -hmm. um, by the end of January, right? Mm -hmm. Men, we need you because you riding with us through this. We need you to hug three men. Three men and tell them you love them. And tell them Can you we, love is them. Is that too much? No, that? that's not too much. You a fan. Is that too much? Ooh. Yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> they can do it. So now I want to get back to, I got it. So you said, once you, we talking about your battery. Mm -hmm. So now you've cleaned up stuff with your children. Mm -hmm. You've cleaned up stuff with your mama. Mm -hmm. You've cleaned up stuff with your siblings, mm -hmm. right? So now I want to get to this loving you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this mm -hmm. is what you say. You say you feel like you will have more battery mm -hmm. to love another person mm -hmm. once you kind of get all your stuff cleaned up, which I do believe because it's energy. It's all about energy, right? Mm -hmm. And capacity. But I really want to get to, I want you to tell me about you loving you. Can you go into that a little bit? What does that look like? It's a process. Mm -hmm. um, it's step by step. Um, is being able to set goals and, and, and reach those goals mm. um, so you can be happy with who you are, figure out who you are, That's so it. then you can be happy with who you are. Yeah. Like I had to say to myself, mm. do I want to be a millionaire? Mm. All the men run around, I, want to I value time over money. I got you. So I need to be clear in that process and everything I do in life, mm. I'm, I'm making sure that I'm in sync with my decisions are based on time over money. Because the moment I make a decision about money, it's going to impact my time. Mm -hmm. So when someone calls me to do some job where I got to travel the world and I'm going to make a bunch of money, well, is that going to impact my time that I have with my wife, with my son, with my daughter? Mm -hmm. And if that affects my time, that's really what speaks to me. Mm -hmm. And that impacts my love capacity. I got you. And so I need to know who I am. Oh, that's good. So my decisions reflect who I am. That's it. So I'm not out of pocket. There we go. That's it right there, Stephen. Mm -hmm. I need to know who I am mm -hmm. fully, right? Yeah. So that I know that my decisions reflect who I am. So I am not out of pocket. Yeah. So I have more capacity to love. And that starts off with self-acceptance. Mm -hmm. Self-acceptance. Because a lot of times, as we've been talking about, is men will find themselves trying to contort to be something other than who they are because society says that's who they should be right. because my mother said that's what I should be. You got me? So we're going back to those primal relationships between you and that the primary caretaker. And if it was my mother who was mostly there, I carry that. If it's unresolved, I carry that into the world. So I'm still trying to be whatever that is that maybe she said I should be. Or if I start a new relationship subconsciously, that's my mother. Like that is my mother mm -hmm. in every relationship. That is the object that I am in love with, right? That primary uh, person in my life, that presence, I am trying to appease mm -hmm. you know i am trying to make make them happy yes. right i'm trying to be who they want me to be because i don't like the pain of when i was a little boy and i displeased mom or right. i didn't do what it was that she wanted me to do so it's something that it's a cycle that men continue to have and along with society so they start to contort themselves meaning they start to reshape who they are mm -hmm. and then they don't really sit with trying to figure out who am I really right. and who is it that I want to be? Because it's not until you figure out who it is that you want to be and you stand up in that and you accept that. Yes. That you can love yourself and love anybody else. When you love yourself, now you can love someone else. Um, so now that moves to see how we just, yeah, we just doing the thing. Yeah. So, so <laughs> then you can love the woman. That's right. I love me. Ooh. 
and I know what it feels like to love me. Ooh. I'm happy with me. Ooh. And now I can give this good love to the woman. Ooh, that's so and I'm ready. Now, now that I know what love is, now that I feel good about love, now I can give love to the woman. I know now what it is. It's a gift now. Right? It's a gift. I'm giving the gift of love. This is going to wrap my person that I'm in love with. Come on, Brad. And she's going to she's going to feel amazing. She's going to feel special. Um, she, it's it's going to be passionate. Mm -hmm. It's going to be it's it's going to allow me to have more patience. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be more kind, more gentle. Yeah. Um, I'm going to know how to approach her. Yeah. And just be like just just it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to say this is my woman and I love her and I need you. Like every chance I get, I want to tell my woman I love you. Mm. Every, men, every chance I get, I love you. You're special. You know, my wife was saying for a while she was missing it. And I was like, you know what? Let me write it down. Oh, that's so good. to make sure you don't miss it. Oh, that's I good. put it in the car. So, just wait, on wait. so please tell me, since you said that, what do you mean when she said I was missing it? Why? Describe that. She she just said that, hey, you she know, said you stopped saying life. it or what, tell me, I'm just saying. Uh, I think she was, I think we were, you know, married, uh, what are we, 19 years now. Mm -hmm, long time. And yeah, and I, I think we were just maybe missing each other running around with them kids. Okay. Them kids. I understand. Listen, I got Ooh, it. Them kids. I've been there. And I so, and so I just took it. So when you love this, is great. I'm glad you called I'm me. That you, I'm because I am going to do that. Right. So what I, what I, what happened was kids are making us miss each other. Mm -hmm. She's not feeling as much love. As I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. That's so good, man. I love it, Stephen. You just say kids are making us miss each other. Yeah. Oh, yes. Come on now. Do, them kids, them do. kids don't make, make you do nothing. You. I'll be focused on the kids. Decide. Mm -hmm. You decide mm -hmm. that whatever that distraction is was more important than whatever this thing is that you're supposed to Focus. be doing. You got me? And it's a subconscious thing, mm -hmm. right? So it's not those kids. Mm -hmm. And remember, we talked a little bit earlier about men not feeling. And so then it was like, you know, when you was in the restaurant and she walked out, you went to blame her. Like right. she, oh, she, she this tripping. is premeditated. She tripping. She, right. But I'm just saying, I'm just calling you just mm -hmm. little things so mm -hmm. that everybody can learn. Right. When you just said the, the kids make us, kids ain't make y'all do nothing. Yes, I agree. Okay. And so, and so, and so then got because of that, you got, got distracted. distracted. Yes. Now I have to be intentional. Oh. And love, when you love someone, it should cause you to be intentional. And so I was like, okay, she's not going to feel unloved. When you love someone, you want them to feel love. Like, what's the point of loving somebody they don't feel loved? That's right. Like, who? Ain't nobody doing that. Right That's, over my head. Right, right. And so, right over my head. And so I just leave her cards now. Oh. Like, like just, like, when over the holidays. Uh -huh. Hey, babe, great job over the holidays. Mm. Phenomenal. As always, our family is lucky to have you. Yes, come you know, on just now. Just put that in the car for my wife. Yes. So she can have it, so she can know, so there can be no misunderstanding. Come on. No miscommunication. Mm -hmm. I love you. Yes. In the car, say that. I love you. Yeah. So say it verbally. And then also, too, when you're married, you miss things sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. I course. said I loved you the other day. I said I loved you on Tuesday. And she's like, no, you didn't. Look at it. It's in the card now. Pick up the card. <laughs> it's there. Read, go read all the cards that I've given you. Yeah. So now she got a stack of cards. It's good. She don't feel loved. She can go refer to them jokers or talk to me, whatever. Go read the cards again yeah. while I've told you all these things about how, mm -hmm. special, how special you are, mm -hmm. how unique you are, That's good. how I'm lucky to have you in my life. I love it. And so love, I love me. Yes. I love my friends. Yes. I love my woman. Mm, that's and so, so good. men. That's the challenge. I love it. And then I'm going to say, uh, as always, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call, I'm going to say to your wife, hey, wifey, beautiful wifey, you don't just have to go to the cards. You can go to the cards if you want to, mm -hmm. but you call this brother to the carpet, yes. baby. Yes. Yeah. She's asked you. She needs yes. to say you. Call, yes. yeah, yeah, okay, a card. That was cute. You did that. And I liked it. I, I actually appreciated that you saw me, that you did that for me. That made me feel special. That made me feel like I wasn't just doing this just to do it. Like you saw, like you saw, that made me also feel like you need me. Yes. Yeah, that you see. So that was amazing. However, I ain't going to the car. I mm -hmm. want you to tell me now. Yes. Right. You got to do some more work, brother. Yes. And vice versa. Right. Men should be able to ask for what it is you want and what it is you need. Right. And that's going to be a whole nother. Oof. 
that's a whole nother podcast that we're going to do, which I'm so excited about is helping you men to find your voices because so many times I'm told by men that they are afraid to express themselves yes. in relationships. This is so freaking common, which brings about a depression. And a lot of men are walking around depressed and you unaware of the depression. You're unaware of it, but it's like a, it's a normal depression. And I'll tell you what that is. I won't drop the clinical name because I know who do it, do it. is going <laughs> I would do the whole podcast okay, on okay, it. Okay. I am a teacher. I like learning new words. I know, but no, I'm a teacher doing this podcast. It's amazing. I think an eye opening when you actually learn that there is a depression that many men have that stops them. Well, it doesn't stop them, but it occurred when they learned that they didn't have a voice mm -hmm. and they didn't have a voice, not only in society, but they didn't have a voice in their partnerships, in their romantic relationships. So going back to loving yourself, loving others, right? Expanding and having more capacity. But um, I also, men, I want you to ask for what you need. Mm -hmm. And we're going to teach you how to do that. Mm -hmm. We're going to teach you how to do that. I'm going to put a pin in it today. But think about that. But we, you got enough work here to do because now Oof. today, that was good. Love was good. Three times. <laughs> three That's right. You got to find three men. Right. That you love. That you love. And you're going to hug them. And you're going to hug them tell them you love them. And you're going to tell them that We're you your love good them. friends. That's I ain't talking right. about don't don't cheat. Don't just grab somebody at work. This is good. Don't, don't grab somebody that you love. You, mm -hmm. Like, like you're a man. You know who you love. Yeah. But now be comfortable with using the word. Yeah. Be I was getting ready to end this, but I'm going to ask you uh -oh. that. I'm glad you just said that. No, that's important. Everything that comes up needs to come up. This is a safe space. When you said don't cheat, right? So are you are you saying, are you men saying, right, that you can love yourself and still cheat? Uh, can you love, are you talking about Should infidelity put a now? Pause? Yeah, because you just Ooh. said cheat. I thought that's what you were saying. Well, I meant, in, in that term, I meant like cheat. Don't cheat, I challenge. Right. Don't just hug somebody randomly and tell oh, them you love okay. them. Oh, okay. I went left. But yeah, but we are going to talk about sex. We are going to talk about we sex. Oh, okay, sex. But I think that. I think that cheating is more than just sex, yes. right? I think it's a coping strategy. Right. Remember well, us and a maladaptive. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But so the question is, so should I leave a pen in that and we yeah, talk about it? Out. Okay, because I'm going to let you go back that to the lab. Be <laughs> because old. can you love yourself mm -hmm. and violate your commitment to someone else? You, you said one more time. We're going to have a whole nother podcast you? right now. <laughs> you didn't say it twice. <laughs> About to go can down. you love yourself? Because we're talking mm -hmm. about love today. Mm -hmm. Can I love myself? Right? Because I'm talking about when we say cheat or infidelity, we're yeah. talking about going outside of a commitment that you've made with someone else to yes. maybe be monogamous, right? right? A commitment. That's what we're talking about. So can I love myself? When you talk about love, can I truly love myself? And remember I told you loving yourself you said it too, was being who you are, knowing what it is that you are and who you are, living through that and accepting who you are. Right. So can I love myself and still violate my commitment? Ooh, that's going to be good. <laughs> I know what I'm going to say. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Okay, y'all. So, okay. So that, did you want to say anything else about love today? I think we good, man. I just, just a reminder, the challenge. Three of your partners, your partners, not co-workers, not dude riding the train with you or uh, in the Uber with you, your partners that's been down with you forever, hug them, tell them you love them by February 1st. I Get love it. Up. I love it. And it doesn't matter how old you are and how old no. you, yes, right. You could no be matter. 14, you could be 20, you could be 50, hug. 60, it does, that's 80. right. I love it. I love it. And to those who may not have partners, like, you know, you are part of a fraternity. Right. Even though I know a lot of men kind of roll in packs, you kind of, whatever your friends were for the most part, not every man, generally speaking, you kind of keep those friends going through life. Yep. But some men don't really have friends. So even if you don't have a friend to hug, then you can hug some maybe new acquaintances, yeah. right? Yeah. Or at least yeah. tell them that you love them. I want you to catch a charge. That's a whole podcast, too, if you're a man that don't have no friends. Oh. That's a whole podcast, too. Is it? And But I would start with, do you love yourself? Like, why don't you have any friends? Oh, do you love child? Do you love yourself? You ain't got no friends because you don't love yourself. Mm. Love yourself, then you have some friends. 
Maybe they're not giving off a good love to friends. That's why they don't have friends. Well, maybe the friends that they had, they let go because they weren't helping them to grow. Exactly. And, so well, that could be another thing. That right. Loving yourself could have made you make that decision to let them go. Right. If you don't love yourself and you don't know how to love people around you, mm -hmm. I mean, you got to go back to figuring out how to love yourself. Okay. So follow that. Go. Follow Follow the process. Set a goal. How do you love yourself? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we really, we talked about today as you walk away with how to love yourself, because this is what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. We ain't just talking about it. We want to give you some work to do, we want you to apply it, right? Mm -hmm. So how to love yourself is trying to sit down, write it down somewhere, get you a little notepad or something. That would be so good. That's yeah. what y'all should do during the series where you can kind of write it out, like loving myself. And so today you're going to identify first who am I? You know, what do I like? What do I want? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what What do I want? What do I like? Mm -hmm. what, what are you going to say? Uh, I, I thought you was going to say. Go ahead. I thought you was going to challenge me to write down uh -huh. as a man. Yes. Just by yourself. Yes. On a little note. That's what I did. Just Go. write down the men that you love. Oh, okay. I ain't get to the men that you love just yet. Just write them down. Okay. And throw it away if you want to or whatever. No. no, it's not for nobody else. It's for you to admit okay. and starting a practice of love, like okay. starting a practice mm -hmm. of saying it out loud. I love Hakeem. Mm -hmm. I love George. Mm -hmm. I love James. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. starting that practice of using those words, using loving terminology with your friends and saying their names mm -hmm. of who you love. So that I'm telling you, that increases your capacity to love. I got using you. Using that. That's that, that's what I want. Okay, no, so I love that. So that mm -hmm. is a skill. Yes. But I still, and I want you to do that, mm -hmm. but I don't want to leave them hanging with trying to figure out how to, because I don't think it's that easy right. to, right, to figure out how to love yourself and how to accept yourself. But you first have to identify, you know, who are you? Right. You know, what is it that you like? What is it that you desire? What are your needs? You have to take some time and explore that. And you can do that with yes. writing. Then when you do that, write it down. Be by yourself. No yes. shame, no criticism by yourself. Yes. Write it down. And if you your woman is in here watching it or she asks you, it's right now this is none of her business. Right. This is about you healing. That's right. 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 No like shame. This. That's right. Don't no shame. But that's business. yours. That's right. So you want to identify who am I? What do I like? You know, what, what do I need? What do I want? You know, who am I? Because no one else can help you and give you and give you happiness if you don't even know who you are and what you want. So you process that. Then when you get to it and you look at it, now you're working on acceptance. I'm accept you can't accept anybody else mm -hmm. until you can accept yourself mm -hmm. unconditionally. You don't have to be perfect. Accept myself unconditionally. I learned this um, from Hendrix, Gay Hendrix. Mm -hmm. Him and his wife, they do this thing. They're psychologists and they've worked with couples for years. They have this whole program or this theory about conscious love. Mm -hmm. But one thing that they say um, that they taught me to do is to tell yourself that I accept myself mm -hmm. unconditionally. Yes. With a deep breath. Mm -hmm. But I accept myself. That is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So that is how you're going to work on starting the journey yes. of loving yourself because then once you love yourself as my brother steven says then you can fully love somebody else i can't wait to watch this podcast <laughs> <laughs> all right so, oh yes thing. did i even do that that's you right do that. you oh my do. god you did not tell other people to subscribe you have to subscribe please listen y'all know this is the mm -hmm. mental health is a lifestyle podcast by your girl, Andrea Wise Brown. And I want you to click this little bell up here so you can subscribe it. Ooh, hit the mic. You're going to subscribe. You're going to like it. And you're going to share it, share it, share it with the men in your lives. Please share this. Please share this. Because I, men need to heal. And here's a space. Because when you heal, you heal your relationships with your children. So you heal your children. You heal your relationships with your family. So you heal them. You heal your relationships with your partners, your romantic partners. Yes. Men, come on, y'all. So, yeah, this is a safe space for men to heal. When, so, yes. When you when you, when you you are, after you write down your names of your friends, you want to yes. challenge and hug. 
Come you on. can send them the podcast and say, hey, man, I'm going to hug you. Ooh, this is why. Oh, <laughs> Stephen, that's so good. Send it to him. I'm going to no hug ex- you. This is why. No explanation needed. Just right. send the Just podcast. Right. You, go, you can do that too. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, y'all. So we will see you next week on the next episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast by your girl, Andrea Wise Brown. Y'all come back. Come on. Next week, you have to be here so that you can learn and you can grow. This is a six-week series. We want to see you back. Right, Steven? Absolutely. Okay.